Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to my way too soon college football top 25 for 2022 really early rankings. We've got a lot of stuff going on right now with the transfer portal. These preseason rankings for next year are going to change a lot, but I wanted to get this out before the national title game between Alabama and Georgia. So my top 25 for 2022, way too early preseason rankings. Starting with number 25, it's going to be Texas. You've got Quinn Ewers, the superstar transfer quarterback. B. John Robinson, one of the top running backs in the nation, does return as well. And they have an overall talented roster. There's going to be a lot of expectations for this program with Quinn Ewers, one of the top overall rated college football recruits in history. He's got that perfect 1,000 rating. He went to Ohio State, transfers back. We'll see how he plays. And then also B. John Robinson, Texas, should have a good offense. They do have a major non-conference game, a home game against Alabama week two. Right now, I like Texas as a fringe top 25 team due to that very talented talented roster. It creates a high ceiling. Number 24, yes, Air Force. They had a great season last year, getting to 10 wins. A really nice bowl win. They return a ton of vets, a lot of veteran talent returning for Air Force. Again, you guys remember that bowl game they had against Malik Cunningham and Louisville. They won 31-28, but the game was a lot less close than the score indicated. Air Force completely controlled that game. You're going to be seeing Air Force on a lot of preseason top 25 lists. They're impressive, folks. They are impressive. Get used to it. Number 23, we've got Nebraska. We know the story with them. The crazy close losses. They finished three and nine. Next year, Scott Frost, he's got to do something. He knows it. He knows he needs to start winning games. I will say with Nebraska and me ranking them, there is a quarterback question mark. Adrian Martinez transferring to Kansas State. I think it's a net positive for Nebraska, the whole Adrian Martinez, Nebraska thing. It just wasn't working out. He needs a change of scenery. Nebraska needs a new quarterback. Adrian Martinez was the quarterback in Nebraska for these past four years. He's using the pandemic year to play in college for one last time. That's why he's transferring to, K to Kansas State. But Nebraska, so close to winning a number of games, could have easily beaten Michigan, possibly could have beaten Ohio State. This is a good good football team. Scott Frost is a good coach. They deserve a preseason ranking. I know they were 3-9, and nine, but we know they were a lot better than the record says they were. I've got them at number 23. They're going to have a big season. They need one badly. They're due for a lot of wins. 22, Boise State, sneaky great end of the year team, return a lot of leaders. Not a lot of people are going to be in on Boise State because their bowl game got canceled. The Arizona Bowl got canceled. They had some issues within their program. They had to put their program on pause. They couldn't play in their bowl game. But Boise State towards the end of the year was unbelievable. I had been saying it for weeks. They were playing such great football. They kind of had a bit, had a bit of a down year. Not many people talked about them early in the season. They suffered two or three losses. That kind of took them out of any sort of national relevance. But Boise State next year, they return basically their entire team. We know how Boise State is. They're one of the top teams in the nation in terms of winning percentage in the last 20 years. They've got a great culture. They're going to be back next year. Probably only lose one game in the regular season. You're going to be hearing about Boise State a lot next year. Number 21, Baylor. Great coach. Respect the team. Yeah, so this was just a courtesy to me. Um, I, I'm not a fan of Baylor's overall team, but I have to give credit where credit is due. What a great year it was for them. They win the Sugar Bowl. Sure, Matt Corral got hurt. If he doesn't get injured, maybe they lose to Ole Miss. But either way, Baylor's going to finish with a top 10 uh, ranking at, at the end of this year. You've got to give them credit. And this is just a courtesy to me to rank Baylor and their great culture that they've had instilled by their head coach. I've got them at 21. you got to rank them. You know, you win a New Year's Six game, you're going to get ranked. So they come in at number 21. Moving on to number 20, we've got Tennessee. I believe in the offense, and they are going to get a lot of preseason hype. So Tennessee, with Hayden Hooker coming back, they're going to get a ton of hype this offseason. I believe they will be ranked 
in the preseason AP poll when that comes out all the way in August. As long as they don't have any sort of crazy transfers, Tennessee is going to get some significant hype next year in the SEC and in preseason rankings. I've got them at number 20 due to their offense returning a lot. Number 19, it's another SEC team. It's Arkansas. KJ Jefferson, I believe, is returning, which is huge news. And they do have a good defensive culture there. Arkansas coming in at number 19. They were able to beat Penn State in their bowl game. That was the Citrus Bowl, I want to say. Penn State not playing a lot of their defense, whatever. You still have to give Arkansas credit for the win. KJ Jefferson, he's a load. He's a beast. He's only going to get better next year with the experience he got this year. Arkansas deserves a preseason ranking. I've got them at 19 right now. Number 18 at Cincinnati. You got to put faith into Luke Fickle. They are going to they are in that easier conference, but they do lose a ton. They lose Desmond Ritter. They lose Sauce Gardner. They lose Kobe Bryant, the other star cornerback. So they lose a lot. They also lose Sanders, the pass rusher. But this is me putting faith in Luke Fickle. I'm not going to put them unranked. I'm not going to worry. They still have an easy conference. They still have a great culture within that Cincinnati program. But obviously, when it comes to preseason rankings for next year, they're going to fall a lot due to the talent that they've lost. They simply cannot recruit well enough to make up for that talent that they lost. So they're coming at number number 18 right now after their playoff performance. Coming in at number 17, it is Purdue. They return a great quarterback with a lot of experience. And then Milton Wright, remember the name, the wide receiver for Purdue. He's taking over for David Bell. What a massive bull win that was for Purdue over Tennessee. And I got to be honest, I lost, I lost a little respect for a lot of Tennessee fans when I saw what happened. I didn't watch the game live but, you know, I saw Purdue won, and quite honestly, I was happy, you know, the Big Ten team beating an SEC team. And then everyone was like, oh, it's it's rigged, it's ridiculous. So I went back and I saw the play of the Tennessee player getting stopped on fourth down, and his forward progress was clearly stopped, folks. Do you guys know what forward progress is? And you've got all these Tennessee fans, all these SEC fans, fake outrage galore. It was clear his forward progress was stopped. Then he went forward about three seconds later. And you're going to have outrage that, oh, Tennessee got robbed? Really? Give me a freaking break. That was a great win for Purdue. Huge bowl win without David Bell, who's a first-round receiver. They do have someone who's replacing David Bell, who's going to be a beast, though. Milton Wright, Purdue should be good next year. Let's show some respect to Purdue and to the Big Ten, and let's rank them inside the top 20 for the preseason for next year. And then at 16, we've got Michigan State. We know the story here. Kenneth Walker is gone. And then there's going to be a lot of question marks with uh, Michigan State based on how Mel Tucker runs his program. He gets a lot of transfers. So I'm guessing he's going to be hitting up that transfer portal, going to be looking for guys who have one or two years left to come in and start right away for Michigan State. Kind of a question mark with Michigan State right now. This early in the offseason, will they be getting a lot of transfers? We know Mel Tucker, that's how he built his team last year. Kenneth Walker was a one-year transfer. He's headed off to the draft now, as he should be. But, but Michigan State get, did get a big win in the New Year's Six Bowl against Pittsburgh. Everyone wants to talk about about how Kenny Pickett didn't play. I agree that was huge, but let's remember, Kenneth Walker also didn't play. Right now, I've got Michigan State at number 16. A lot of question marks, though. What transfers are they going to get? Number 15, we've got Oregon. They return their entire offensive line, and they've still got a good defense. They lost Mario Cristobal. We understand that to Miami. They, they ended up hiring Georgia's defensive coordinator to be their head coach. I like that hire a lot. They're going to be more of a defensive-oriented team. You're playing in the Pac-12. A lot of winnable games in that conference. People are going to be down on Oregon entering this year. I'm a little bit down on them, but I think 15 is a good spot to rank Oregon. They did get destroyed in the Alamo Bowl. That did them no favors going into the offseason. They're going into the offseason with extremely little momentum, but I still like this team. They've been winners in the past. This is a program that normally wins. There's a lot of money with Nike that goes into this program. A lot of talent. They've recruited really well the past few years. They should be all right to be very competitive in the Pac-12 
Number 14, Oklahoma State. They're kind of a placeholder right now but I had to show respect for the great season that they had. They were ranked number seven and they beat number five Notre Dame in their bowl game. They're probably gonna finish the year ranked number sixth in the nation. I just, I got to show respect for that. What a great season. They lose so much, including their great defensive coordinator to Ohio State, Jim Knowles. So that's going to be a coach they're going to have to replace. Again, it looks like they're going to be a placeholder. I would not be surprised at all if they had a 6-6, six 7-5 and six, seven and five type season next year just based on how much they lose. But you do have to show respect for the great season that they had. That's why they get a preseason rank of number 14 for me for next year. Number 13, uh, USC. We've got the Lincoln-Riley hype. It'll be interesting to see where uh, other pollsters put USC for next year. The whole Caleb Williams thing right now, I will say, my prediction on Caleb Williams, I think he's following Lincoln Riley. Uh, I would be very surprised if Caleb Williams goes anywhere else other than USC. The second Lincoln Riley bolted for USC from Oklahoma, people were wondering if Caleb Williams was going to transfer. It's looking extremely likely, almost 100% likely right now, that Caleb Williams, the former five-star quarterback who played really well as a true freshman, is transferring from Oklahoma. Oklahoma just got a transfer quarterback themselves for next year in Dylan Gabriel, who is sort of a one-and-done type of guy. So that would lead you to believe that Caleb Williams has told Oklahoma he is transferring from their program and I think he goes to USC. I also think Lincoln Riley this offseason is going to be able to attract a numerous amounts of offensive talent, really good receivers in the transfer portal. We know how these things work now. You can start right away. Lincoln Riley and USC, they're going to be competitive year one in the Pac-12. I've got them at number 13. Number 12, it's going to be Miami. They have a boatload of talent. You've got the Mario Cristobal hype. Tyler Van Dyke, who looked phenomenal, is only going to be better with more experience. This Miami team, I understand you're saying they didn't have a great year last year. How are you going to rank them 12th? Let me tell you something, folks. This team has a ton of talent. Leonard Taylor is someone to watch. The massive defensive tackle, former five-star top five player in the nation. Miami is going to surprise a lot of people. You may be saying, how is Miami ranked 12th? That's a little high for a team that didn't have a very good year. Folks, last year when Miami was ranked 14th in the preseason poll, I said it was ridiculous. They should be unranked. The only reason they were ranked was because they wanted to give Alabama a ranked win to start off their year. If you guys remember week one last year, Alabama faced Miami uh, in their little non-conference game. That game was a neutral site game. I had said Miami had no business being ranked last year. I don't know why they were ranked. I guess De'Aaron King's a veteran, whatever. He ends up getting injured. Miami has a terrible year, but this year Miami, new head coach, tons of talent. I am high on Miami in the ACC. They're going to battle with Clemson uh, all year in the ACC for the top team there. I've got them at 12th right now in my preseason poll. Number 11, Penn State. Great program, great head coach, and they have a superstar quarterback coming in. I will say he is going to be a true freshman, but they have a top five player in the nation coming in to Penn State. Sean Clifford's probably going to be the quarterback next year, but Penn State, I just have so much respect for that program. So much respect for James Franklin. It was a little bit of a, of a tough year. They did go 7-7 and six. They lost their bowl game, but overall, Penn State, every single year, they are very competitive, especially against Ohio State. So much respect for Penn State. I've got them at number 11 right now. Moving on to my top 10 early preseason rankings. We've got at number 10, Utah. They lose their superstar linebacker, Lloyd, who's probably going to be a first-round pick, but they return Cameron Rising and Clark Phillips III, who's a great quarterback. They have a great culture there at Utah. They played phenomenally against Ohio State. Sure, Ohio State was missing some guys due to opt-outs, but still, Utah played Ohio State basically, you know, extremely close, down to the wire. They were leading most of the game. That impressed me a lot. I like this Utah team. Kyle Winningham's a great head coach, a lot of experience. They're going to be really good. They're coming in at number 10 for me. Number nine, I've got Wisconsin. 
People are going to be a little surprised by this one, but Wisconsin, nobody paid attention to them because they lost three games early. They've got the QB experience returning. They have a superstar running back who's going to be a sophomore now, and they had the number one defense in the nation in terms of yards per game allowed last year, and they return a ton of it. Now, you could say a lot of that good defense is due to them playing in the Big Ten West, playing a lot of bad offenses, but either way, I don't think very many people know how good Wisconsin's defense was this past year. They were under the radar because they lost three games early and nobody paid, paid attention to them. This is a team, great culture, sound program. I will say they do have a regular season game against Ohio State in Columbus next year. That's tough. That is tough, but either way, Wisconsin should be really good, should have an unbelievable running game like they normally do. They're coming in at number nine on my list. Number eight, it's going to be Texas A&M. A lot of moving parts here. What's going on with the quarterback? So Texas A&M is bringing in possibly the best recruiting class in history uh, this offseason. As for next year, will that really help them much? I don't think it will. True freshmen, some of them can make impacts, but that Texas A&M recruiting class will probably not uh, really help them next year. Again, a lot of them are going to be true freshmen. And then what's going on with the quarterback situation with Texas A&M? They have a five-star true freshman coming in. But again, do you want to start a true freshman? I think Texas A&M and their boosters will be looking at the transfer portal for a potential superstar quarterback. I have not heard Caleb Williams and Texas A&M recently. Once again, I think Caleb Williams is going to USC. Um, but either way, Texas A&M and their boosters are going to want to try and throw around money to potentially get a quarterback. I've got them at number eight right now. Once again, a lot of moving parts with this team. They signed an unbelievable recruiting class, but a lot of those guys, as true freshmen, how much of an impact can they make? They're going to need some time to get into the program and, and really get a, get a bearing for themselves. I've got them at number eight right now. Number seven, Notre Dame. Good, not great every year. And then we'll have to see what happens with Marcus Freeman. So Notre Dame, the past three years, they have like a crazy good record where they've only lost like a a total of five games. We understand they're in an independent. You know, they don't play in the conference championship, whatever. But really, I just didn't know where to put Notre Dame. I had no clue. I will say, I guarantee you, Notre Dame will be a top 10 team in the AP preseason poll because week one, they face Ohio State in Columbus and they're going to want to make that a top 10 matchup. So Notre Dame, I guarantee you, will be ranked inside the top 10 uh, preseason poll because they want that week one game against Ohio State, which is probably going to be on ESPN. They're going to want that game to be a top 10 matchup. I have them at number seven because I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I was filling this list out, I was going from number 25 to number one, but then somewhere, you know, midway through, I went, I started to go from number one to number 25. So I did a lot of teams and then I had a lot of teams and then I was missing one team and Notre Dame was just, they were the last team and the number seven spot was empty. So I put them at number seven. That's the only reason why they're number seven. Realistically, I'd probably put them around number 10. But again, I don't, you know, you take a look, Wisconsin, Texas A&M, are they worse? Are they better? You know, it's very debatable. We're very early into the offseason, so that's all going to work itself out. Number six, we've got Oklahoma. Defense should be better. Caleb Williams. So when I wrote this, this was before it was announced that Caleb Williams was going to transfer. I will say Oklahoma did a very good job getting Dylan Gabriel. Guys, if you don't remember, Dylan Gabriel, the former UCF quarterback, who was phenomenal for UCF had that season ending injury like week three this year really early into the season this year he had a season ending injury but I like Dylan Gabriel a lot they should have a better improved defense with Br Brett Venables and that defensive prep pedigree that he brings Oklahoma coming in at number six maybe a little high for them because Caleb Williams is transferring maybe a better position for them would be number nine or number ten but let's remember they had a terrible down year this year and they're still probably going to finish AP top 12 AP top 13 in an extremely down year this is still a really good college football program there's you know you've, you've got the transfer Dylan Gabriel coming in you're playing in a conference where you can win a lot of games in the big 12 a lot of winnable games there 
there. I've got Oklahoma at number six, maybe a little high, maybe a little high with Caleb Williams transferring. I'll agree there, but I still like that program. Moving on to my top five programs preseason for 2022 at number five, it is Michigan. They lose both of the superstar pass rushers, but they might upgrade at QB with J.J. McCarthy. Also, it's important to note, under Jim Harbaugh, Michigan's defenses have always been good. No matter who they lose, they've always had solid top 25 type defenses. I think that continues even though they, even though they lose Ojabo, even though they lose Aiden Hutchinson. Both of those guys are going to be first round picks. Daxton Hill might sneak into the late first round as well. They're going to be losing him, so they lose a lot on the defensive side of the ball, but their offense might be a little bit better. They return a lot of guys on the offensive line. Michigan right now at number five. They were a tough team to rank. But they had such a great year last year. It'll be interesting to see what they do for an encore. They have a very easy non-conference schedule. We'll have to see if they're able to run through that and then get into Big Ten Conference play. They're coming in at number five right now. Number four, we've got Clemson. Defense is still great. DJ Uilungile is going to have more experience. Remember, DJ was a former five-star top five player in the nation. This kid has the talent. He's gotten the experience now to be better. Clemson still great culture, great defense. Let's not overreact to a down year. It was a down year by Clemson standards. They were out of the playoff discussion by like week six, I think, when they lost to, what was it, Wake Forest maybe? they lost, I think that's who they lost to, either them or Pittsburgh. Uh, but they did go 10-3. and three. They did win the Cheez-It Bowl. So this is a team that even in their down year, they still won double digits games. They still recruit unbelievably. They're going to have a great defense. The ACC, it's going to be them and Miami. Those are two top teams. It's going to be fun. I've got Clemson at number four right now. Let's not overreact to one down year, folks. Coming in at number three, it is Georgia. Total reload on the defense. Unbelievable recruiting classes. So this is why fans love recruiting five stars and getting all these great recruiting classes because Georgia loses so many guys on their defense but because their recruiting has been so good, it enables them to just completely reload. And I've got them at number three. It's going to be interesting. I do think they're going to beat Alabama in the national title. And if they beat Alabama, I think they're going to be ranked number two preseason going into next year. I have them at number three right now. Stenson Bennett, I'm not sure what his eligibility looks like. Who's going to be the quarterback for Georgia next year? Will it be JT Daniels? He certainly isn't going to the NFL at this point. Will they try and get a transfer? You know, there was talk of them getting Caleb Williams. It doesn't, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But overall, Georgia is a team that's just going to completely reload their defense. Their recruiting has been absurd the past four years. They are a reload program, not a rebuild program. When you recruit this well, when you get six five stars every single year, that enables you to contend every year they're reloading, not rebuilding next year. They're number three. Number two, we've got Ohio State. They return perhaps the best quarterback in college football, C.J. Stroud, Jackson Smith, and the Jigba. But folks, the key here, new defense. A lot of people don't know this. Ohio State has not had a legit defensive coordinator the past two years. Next year, that changes. Jim Knowles, one of the best defensive coordinators in college football, was Oklahoma State's defensive coordinator last year when they finished top three in total defense. He comes over. Ohio State has a lot of good defensive players. They're also getting in their recruiting class C.J. Hicks, who's a five-star linebacker. You've got Sonny Styles, who's a five-star hybrid. Ohio State's defense is going to be so much better next year. And again, you've got C.J. Stroud, who looked so unbelievable in the Rose Bowl. Sure, he wasn't pressured very much. That's kind of where he struggles when he gets pressured. But oh my, C.J. Stroud, some of those throws, Marvin Harrison Jr., they've got these great receivers, Emeka Abu. What a returner he is. And then Jackson Smith Njigba. Oh my goodness. He's the best receiver in college football for next year. No doubt about it. Ohio State is absolutely loaded offensively. And then defensively, you're going to start seeing some of these five stars like a Jack Sawyer, like a JTT. Uh, some of these pass rushers really step out and show out. And then you've got the linebackers, Tommy Eichenberg, 17 tackles in the Rose Bowl. You've got another guy like Steel Chambers who's playing well. Denzel Burke, a little bit afraid of contact. I'd like to see Denzel Burke hit some people some more, but he still is a 
is a really good cover corner who played as a true freshman. And then we'll see what happens at the other cornerback spot. Maybe Jordan Hancock, who was recruited, who was a really high recruit, takes over there. But this Ohio State team is completely loaded. And the key thing here, they've been playing without a defensive coordinator for the last two years. They finally get a superstar defensive coordinator. They will be better on defense next year and still be unbelievable on offense. Remember, this was the best offense in college football in points per game, in yards per game, in yards per play. Last year with C.J. Stroud, he's only going to get better with the experience he's gotten. They do get Trevion Henderson back as well. He's only a true sophomore. This team's going to be unbelievable. And then the number one team on my list is New Mexico State. I'm kidding. It's going to be Alabama. Um, I think no matter what happens in the national championship, Alabama is going to be number one. You've got Nick Saban. You've got Bryce Young, the Heisman Trophy winner, returning. And then you've got the superstar pass rusher, Will Anderson, also returning. A lot of people don't know that. Both Bryce Young and Will Anderson will be back next year for, for Alabama. Both of these guys, if they entered the draft this year, would be top five picks. It's crazy, but they're both true sophomores, so they need to come back. As for Alabama, you know, it'll be interesting. What do they do at receiver? I know they've recruited well, but they are losing Jamison Williams. That could be the one question mark. The defense should be even better next year. So Alabama right now, even if they lose to Georgia in the national title game, with the amount that they return and the amount that Georgia loses, I think even if they lose to Georgia, they will be ranked preseason AP number one next year. You're returning the Heisman Trophy winner. You're returning the superstar, possibly best pass rusher in college football. A lot of people think that now over Aiden Hutchinson after Aiden Hutchinson got shut down by Georgia's offensive line. So I have Alabama at number one. And then we've got some teams that just missed the list. I'm just going to run down these teams. You've got UCLA. So there's a bit of a rumor that Caleb Williams could go to UCLA. If that happens, UCLA would absolutely enter my top 20, um, but I do not think that will happen. I think he, Caleb Williams ends up going to USC. We've got Pittsburgh. This one hurts, man. It does. I know Pittsburgh returns a lot, but the problem is they don't return Kenny Pickett. That's a problem. Wake Forest, they lose a lot. That's another ACC team. Both of those teams faced each other. Wake Forest not inside my preseason top 25. Unfortunately, they lose a lot for next year. Iowa State, not good enough. I think Iowa State could be a fringe top 25 team just based on the way Matt Campbell has that culture at Iowa State, but they do lose their star running back, Brock Purdy. Maybe that's addition by subtraction with Brock Purdy because he was so bad this year, but either way, Iowa State just misses. Old Miss, I've got a bunch of just question marks for them because I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do. I do expect Lane Kiffin to get a transfer portal quarterback. At that point, they might enter my preseason top 25. Lane Kiffin is a really good salesman, and he does produce high-octane offenses, so he could get a nice transfer quarterback in the portal. Arizona State, yeah, they'd be right there. Arizona State returns Jane Daniels. That, that's that's a really good quarterback that's returning. The Pac-12 is going to have a few really good teams depending on what U, UCLA does. Um, Arizona State, they'd be right on the edge with Jane Daniels returning. They were okay this past year. Kind of a letdown year, but I like them. And then Wyoming, they've got an unbelievable defense and they return everyone. You are going to be hearing about, about Wyoming this year. Guys, this is just a way too early. This is before the national title even happens between Georgia and Alabama. Way too early top 25 list. There it is right there. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's all is in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.